Bhagavad Gita, text 2.18 Only the bodies inhabited by the eternal, indestructible and immeasurable soul are said to be subject to destruction. Therefore, get up and fight, O descendant of Bharata. The plural bodies, imi, the haha, in this verse, refers to the physical and subtle mental bodies mentioned in verse 13 and 14, respectively. According to the Shruti, uktaha, both of these are subject to destruction, antavantaha, the embodied soul, on the other hand, is indestructible, anashinaha. Krishna describes the soul as immeasurable, apra meyasya, yet it is mentioned elsewhere that the individual soul is not ten thousands the size of the tip of a hair, Svetasvatara Upanishad 5.9. However, these two statements are not contradictory, for no one can measure one ten thousandth of the tip of a hair. The Upanishadic measurement of the soul is not to be taken literally. Furthermore, apra meyasya refers to the soul's being incomprehensible. It cannot be measured in our mind due to its being beyond mind rather than a product of it. Maya, illusion, also means to measure. The soul cannot be measured with the limited instrument of the mind. Thus, it is implied here that it can only be known through scripture or revelation. The soul being immeasurable and indestructible, Arjuna has nothing to fear. Therefore, Tasmat, he should not desist from battle, but rather follow his dharma. Without performing one's dharma, the difficult subject matter, Krishna is explaining, cannot be easily understood. Commitment to performing one's dharma is also a form of knowledge. It purifies the heart, enabling one to understand practically the nature of the self. In general terms, Krishna's order to fight here means to perform one's own dharma, which for Arjuna was to act as a warrior. At this point, Arjuna is left with the thought that although he should not grieve for anyone lost in the battle, the sins arising from killing others will still be his. There is no rule that says one will be free from the sin of killing another as long as he does not grieve for their loss. Thus Krishna addresses this issue in the next verse, echoing the Katha Upanishad 2.19.